welcome to tonight's exciting edition of Hidden in the Universal Vault. I'm Ron, your host, and today I thought we'd go ahead and we take a look at a film. We're going to go back, yes, we're going to go back to the 1960s as we take a look at a film starring my favorite actor, probably one of the greatest actors in Hollywood, Clint Eastwood. And we're taking a look at a movie which is, which is, uh, actually it stars Clint Eastwood. He co-stars along with Susan Clark and Don Strott, along with Lee J. Cobbs, directed by Don Siegel, Coogan's, Coogan's Bluff. I am watching this off of the Clint Eastwood American Icon Collection box set. That's what I'm watching this off of. Also came with, also came with a cool slip, cool slip like that. So put that right there because I can't fit it up on there. So let's talk about Coogan's Bluff, shall we? Uh, Coogan's Bluff was obviously released in 1968, and it follows a man named Walter Coogan. Uh, in the movie, he just goes by the name of Coogan. And basically what he is, let me move this a little closer right here, and I'm just going to leave it right there. So he's basically a cop from Arizona. This, from what I've read online, this was also the inspiration to the TV show McCloud with Dennis Weaver. Some some sites say that, but I'm not totally sure. So focus, like I said, on Walter Coogan, who just goes by the name of Coogan. So he's an Arizona cop, and he just arrested a guy. So he decides he gets called and says, "Would you like to come to New York City and help us track down this man?" And oddly enough, in he basically, he's there to track down the guy. And from what I heard, he also is trying to, he's also trying to track down another guy. So we get these different different stories. He's this cop. He's also an honest cop. He's also a gentleman at times. But he actually goes and hunts. Basically, he goes after these people. So there's also a scene, though, where... He basically finds the guy, but then he basically goes after this that after this woman, and then we get another scene where he's at the nightclub. Now, when I did review a movie from the '60s on my channel called Night of the Following Day, I mentioned that it's very rare for nudity in movies. Well, Cuckoo's Bluff actually has nudity. They go he goes to the strip clubs to cover these guys, and he basically they're they're. They're at the club, but they also paint bodies, I guess, something like that. So he's going, discovers them, and and he's like, the guy calls him Charlie, but his name is actually Coog Coogan. So he, the guy literally just, he's like, call him the right name. So he basically put, this guy puts his hand on a woman's light, and then he just smacks a guy with a wine bottle and says, now I'm not there for violence, okay? Put the knife down. So he listens to him, puts that, picks it up like that, and like that on a piece of wood. There's also, also a while back, we see another cop who doesn't like Coogan a lot, and the two of them don't get along. Then... His then he goes finds this girl, and he it's his rage meter gets up high, and then he tosses this woman. So yeah, he tosses this woman, and he wants to get revenge. Interesting enough, there's a scene where they go to the pool hall, and oddly enough, the guy who voiced Grandpa Lou from Rugrats, uh, David Doyle, has a small role that he plays the leader leader of those leader of those men. So there's one big fight scene and it's just phenomenal. Though I found out this in the cast that the actor from the sitcom who would later go on to be in the 80s sitcom Different Strokes appears in this movie, Conrad Brin. So yeah, I'm like, Grandpa Lou's in this? That's crazy. I'm like, his voice sounds different than he does the whole, Come Flav and I've played cards for 50 years. That's my impression of... Grandpa Pickles, Grandpa Lou. So I think I mentioned everything about the film. I think you kind of get the idea of what Coogan's Bluff is. Also, the, also I'll mention one more scene before I actually 
get to what I think of the film. Near the end of the film, they chase a guy named Johnny. I do believe he's played by Seymour Cassis, who also appears in this movie. I'm like, there's some good cast in this movie. So, there's a scene where he's on the motorcycle, and he rides a motorcycle chase, and he's like, hey, what are you doing with my motorcycle? Grabs the other cop, and he's like, that's my motorcycle! It's like, and we get one big, long chase through, through there. We get a long, long chase through Central Park on a motorcycle. I do believe it's Central Park. The movie was shot entirely in New York City, so that's kind of cool. So I think that's all I'm going to mention, what I, what the plot is about Coogan's Bluff, without giving much away. I really love Coogan's Bluff. I think this shows you how great Eastwood is and how much Eastwood is an actor. Don Siegel, who would be Eastwood's lead man in a few other films, what the last movie ever directed in was 1979's Escape from Alcatraz. But yeah, that's that. Also, in 1971, now it's all available, it's on the set as well, Play Missy for Me. He directs him in that movie, which will actually be Eastwood's directorial debut. We'll get to that one a little bit later. But for now, I really wanted to talk about Coogan's Bluff. And this set is awesome. This is, that's the American Icons collection. But I'm getting ahead of myself to that set. But anyways, I really like Coogan's Bluff. I think the action's great. The pacing is wonderful. Uh, Eastwood shows you how great. There's some really fun moments. I think I mentioned most of that. And it's just really, 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 really good. It's, it is a really fun movie. I was surprised at how good this movie was. And I, it's just an awesome movie. And the thing about it is, Eastwood really does make this movie work. If it had any other actor, I don't think this would have worked. And it's I love diving into these 60s Universal movies. It's film history. Although, I want to mention another thing, though. The blood in this is more realistic than something that Blumhouse Productions would do. I think for 1968... The blood looked a little looked more realistic. I think they use a ton of blood packets in this because the blood, either like blood pa blood packets or blood pills, that you blood pills are what you bite onto to get the blood to come down. That's what they're that's what they're called. You don't swallow them; you just bite on them, and the blood comes down. It looks really realistic. The scene where he's fighting Grandpa Lou, yeah, I'm just gonna say Grandpa Lou in this video. The scene where he fights all the men, he's all bloodied up. You can literally see, like, they zoom. After he, like, beats the crap out of that guy. I can't think of his character's name, but I'm just going to say Grandpa Lou in this video. So, he beats up Grandpa Lou real hard, like that. You can, like, see the camera pull up to his face, and you can see, like, the blood coming down off his mouth. Again, the, the blood looks so realistic. And again... This is compared to something that Blumhouse would do, Blumhouse Productions would do in their films. I say it's more realistic than a film that would come out in 2010 or 2020. So yeah, that's that's all I'm going to mention about this. It's really good, guys. I had a lot of fun with Coogan's Bluff. So yeah, I'm going to give Coogan's Bluff, I give Coogan's Bluff my highest rating, 5 out of 5. It is really good. It's a lot of fun. The pacing, it, it's a ton of fun. If this is an Eastwood movie you've never seen, though, I remember watching this bits and pieces of this on AMC, I think in high school. Maybe I was out of high school. Something like that. And I've never seen bits and pieces, but never saw it the whole way through until I saw it now for the series. And I thought it's just a ton of fun. So, like I said again, don't sleep on this movie, guys. It's really good. This movie is going to have a spot on my best list at the end of the year. So I just want to kind of mention that out right now. And I loved everything about it. So, yeah, that's my view of Coogan's Bluff. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like the content on the channel, I have more videos on there. I have a ton of videos up on there. But if you do like the stuff, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. 
Uh, if you, I'm on Letterbox, guys, so check me out there. And as always, keep watching those Universal movies, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.